I think a lot of people think that, you know, math is a language in itself, and that if someone struggles to read or someone struggles with the language, that they can be dropped into a math class and be successful, but, but that, that isn't true. Students need to be able to do this math standard, but what do I do as a proficient thinker to do those things? And sometimes that's an interdisciplinary literacy practice, sometimes that's a standard for mathematical practice, sometimes that's a thinking strategy. Here's what we're gonna dive in today. We're specifically gonna look at visual. We're gonna draw some pictures, we're gonna look at symbolic. That means we're gonna deal with numbers and letters. If we're just focusing on the numbers, we're not doing our students a service. We really have to spend time focusing on the reading so they can interpret it and pull the math out of it. Our process is mathematicians can move between representations. At first, when you look at it from a math teacher perspective, a lot of times you might think, I'm focused just on the math, but really we want to foster students that can speak and listen and the interdisciplinary literacy practices are what we want our students to become. That they can look at anything, whether it's a math problem or a picture, and interpret it and think about it as text. They can activate their background knowledge and apply it to new situations. Let's think about this number here, because I have a bunch of ends, right? And then I've got this 25 hanging off. So instead of dividing by two, what if we did something at 25 first? Every time we go into the classroom, uh, Mr. Dennis has a picture on the board and we get our notebooks out and we write about like what we think, what we see, what we wonder about the picture. I heard a question about volume, like how many gallons this pool would fill up. I heard some questions about the camera itself, like this idea that some of those lines look curved, and so is that a trick from the camera, the water. Writing about the problem helps me solve math because it helps me comprehend the question a lot better and know how to answer the question. It pushes me to be a better writer because it helps me explain my answers better and be more reflective. If we want students to just be able to do computations, it's fine to do things the old way where we're just doing those computations. But that's not what math is like in the real world. Math in the real world is about interpreting data, looking at a situation and pulling the math out of it. And so it's so important to have lessons that connect the math to the real world and that students are pulling the math out of the problems. It doesn't show us how much we have to I'm pretty sure. So we're going to have to try to something out. Play around with see what happens, right? So we have an idea of maybe a table. I spend a lot of time thinking about how my students can read the text necessary that is going to be asked to them with grade level math text. I think a lot about how to teach them those close reading skills. I think a lot about how to build my students into better writers because they have to be able to communicate their ideas and articulate their thinking. And so I spend a lot of time around teaching them to read and write like mathematicians. And if I multiply that by two, because that's supposed to be John, then it's going to be more than this. Okay, so you made an equation with J as your variable for John. You feel like your equation makes sense, but we start to kind of come to a solution that doesn't quite work out as clean as it should. Okay. So the mathematical skills we were addressing in today's lesson was all about creating and solving an algebraic equation from a real world situation. But then I was really focusing on how students can move between mathematical representations so they can take a look at the contextual problem and move that into the symbolic by creating an equation or move that into the visual by drawing a picture. All of your letters in this great drawing represent different quantities, right? The majority of the time we want to work in groups in class because I want students to be able to justify and explain their thinking. I want students to think about other people's perspectives. I want them to build empathy. And so not only from only a math perspective, but when I think about developing citizens that are going to be in our world in a few years, I want them to be able to get along with each other and to be able to interact. So I really like to work together with my partners and try to like figure out what the problem is saying. So then I can like figure out what the answer is by listening to other ideas. If you really ask questions and if you ask someone, then they might get like more ideas. So then you can know what the vocabulary is. Mr. Dennis has us right because we can think more about the problem and more about the process. So then it gets us thinking of what the process is and going back to your answer and checking if your answer is right or wrong. It's smart. That's what good mathematicians do, right? When something doesn't make sense, we think like, oh, something's not right here. 
When students walk into my classroom, a lot of times when I ask them to talk, they will say things like, I got seven, what did you get? And that's the level of their mathematical discourse. And so I do a lot of things to try to get them to talk more about the process than an answer. Before I do a lesson, I'll think about the math terms we'll need to know in order to be successful. There's some special words we're gonna kinda need to have some background to solve today. Your three words are equation, variable, and swimming laps. Today I did swimming laps because while that wasn't important to the math content, it was important to the context. I'll pull out those two to three terms that might be important. And a lot of times I'll do it at the beginning of a lesson to kind of do as an assessment to see what they know about what we're getting into. But when I think about here's the lesson, and so then what interdisciplinary literacy practice is going to be conducive to fitting in with that lesson is gonna help students evolve not only as mathematicians, but also as readers and writers. I saw some quality mathematics today. Even if you struggled, you did not give up. And that was really inspiring to see.